the sun has got his hat on, he's coming out to play. Yes, I've been on holiday and I have definitely got my mojo back. Also got the better blonde. You know when you go on holiday if you've got blonde hair and it just kind of changes to the perfect colour. I've been really annoyed with my hair colour in the last few months. I haven't got it quite right, but um, even though my roots need doing, don't mind that so much. It's just that nice summery blonde. Anyway, I don't want to bang on about myself. How are you? And good morning to all of you who watch me on a Saturday and Sunday morning. How are you doing? Are you all snugged up with your nice cosy dressing gowns, hugging a cup of coffee? Oh, I wish I was there too. But anyway, the sun is out and God, isn't it nice to be in full spring? Got my lovely blue nails on. Got some lovely colours to show you. I'm going to do a kind of matte bronze makeup today. One of the looks, actually, this isn't the complete look, I'll tell you as I go through, but my husband said, that's the makeup I love you in the most. I mean, literally, apart from maybe like a smoky eye, and not for a while, because I haven't been bothered to put it on actually when we've gone out. <laughs> um, he hasn't really or never ever comments on my makeup, which is kind of annoying, but I've got used to it now. Um, anyway, so I'll talk to you about this kind of very simple makeup. If you want to know husband's favourite makeup, I'll do a whole look on that. I actually didn't know where this film was going. It certainly wasn't going into husband's favourite makeup look. It was going into a, a spring is here and back makeup. So I've got a few new products to share with you. And there's quite a few little new things going on. So I think next week I'll do a kind of like get your spring glow back, I wanted to do a matte one and kind of just excite you and inspire for all the lovely colours that you can add to your makeup or just that kind of readjustment of seasons. So we're going to start with the um, La Roche-Posay Aqua Gel B5. Um, now this is a really great price SPF, it's SPF 30 but it's a gel, I'm sure I've used this before. I'm sure I have, I think actually I might have used it recently. It's just that it's on my table and I love to use it um, pre-makeup if I know that it's gonna be a really hot day because it is one, so cooling on application, glides on like silk and it feels lightweight. So if you've got kind of like a normal to combination skin or you don't like the feel of a very hydrating SPF then this is one for you. So I wanted to start with this one first because it's definitely some of my one of my faves. I don't know whether it's interesting because I know I have spoken year on year out about SPFs and there's a couple of new ones coming through. I don't know whether you want a whole film on that. Um, please do let me know any summer kind of like different seasonal kind of makeup adaptions or questions that you might have about makeup. So I really do love a kind of matte tan. So I'm going to use a couple of different things here to show you. And what caught my eye was the e.l.f. Camo Foundation. It is a foundation, but it's in this really beautiful color. Um, it comes in loads of different colors. This is medium 355W Moyen. Um, there are lots of different colors because obviously it's a foundation, but I tell you something, uh, foundations can make really nice bronzers, but I'm going to apply it with a light brush first because I don't want it to be really, really dense. Um, but I'm going to mix it with um, Prison Libre Skin Caring Matte Foundation from Givenchy. Now, a client of mine is getting married soon and she loves Givenchy um, and they want to work with her on her wedding. So they've just sent me a few things and I haven't used the um, Prism Libras for such a long time. Love the Givenchy lipsticks and mascara. Um, and other products that I've used from them. The, the lip, lip liners, you know I love the lip liners. But this is their new foundation. So I'm gonna start with this. Um, and this is shade um, 3C240. Um, they have a glowy one too. I'm gonna to start with a nice little firm brush um, and I'm going to use it like a concealer. So you can see that I'm much warmer than I normally am. Um, because when you're doing like a matte tan, you just kind of want to make sure that all your products work well together. And I want to make sure that this kind of like orbital area of my eye is lighter because if you're going in for that sort of bronzy look, you just want to avoid bronzing your whole face because that's what, you know, a fake tan does. I've enhanced a little bit um, with my James Reed H2O uh, tanning mist because it's just so easy. There's a new Saint Pray one out as well. Which I must get my hands on and try um, because I would love to see how that compares to James's. 
it's brand new. I think it's got lots of skincare in as well. Um, so using the matte foundation as a concealer has its benefits for one being super light, not being so dense. Um, this is packed with lots of skincare ingredients and it's one of those products that really kind of works well with your skin um, over a sort of a period of time. They say 24 hours, but I mean, unless you're looking good for 24 hours, what's the point? So this is what I've done. You can see that my skin tone is, is, is uneven as is, nice and brown on my chest. Um, so I want to make sure that the color I'm gonna go for is going to flow up my face. But if I darken the sockets of my eyes, I'm just going to look tired and a little grubby. So that is that. I'm going to leave it like that. Maybe just a little bit around my lip area. And come to the bronze. So you see it looks a little ashy, but you'll see how it connects together because it is a bit like a painting. You know, if you're doing a water painting, I don't know if there's any budding artists here, you just do one color and you blend it into the other shade. But I understand if you're a makeup novice, that's a bit like, uh, don't feel comfortable with that. Um, so let me take this nice big brush. Um, so this is the Refia uh, Japanese brushes, very good price. I don't think I'm pronouncing that right, Refia. I'm sure you can let me know. Anyway, so let's, ah, let's go with that first. Okay, fine. So the Camo foundation actually comes with a sponge. Now I'm not a lover of a matte foundation because it just doesn't suit my skin because my skin is dry and it's nearly 50 in January. Um, but if you've got a combination oily skin and you like a full on look, then this is literally perfect. But I love these formulas, very similar to MAC Studio Fix Foundation, which I was, was brilliant at covering up all my spots back in the day. A nice thick pigmented matte powder is brilliant at that. Anyway, I'm banging on. So let's put the, oh wow, look at that. Oh, that's delicious. That is so nice. I mean delicious because there's lots and lots of pigment here. So let's start, let's see the color. Oh, perfect. Okay, so I've gone in timid. Now, interestingly enough, so this is the big brush. If I went in with the stubby brush, which I absolutely love, this is an hourglass one, so beautiful. I would get a really, I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna put this in there, just tap it in. See, look at that. So you see the difference, right? This is just a little bit of unexpected education through this makeup. The nice, big, soft, fluffy brush deposited this makeup really gently, giving me a very natural finish. And then the brush that is much more solid gives you much more of a dense application, which would be too harsh, right? So I'm just gonna use the rest of this and then I'll blend in, but that was if you've got a big brush and you're putting on a strong color, whether it's blush or whether it's bronzer, just, and you wanna go a little bit delicate, just choose something like this. So let's just, I'm just gonna take off the excess of that powder and I can blend it through so it goes back to nothing. I've got my pigmentation stuff there, but I don't really care. It's not what this looks about. I'm just really loving this kind of like, it's a very sort of like mid, uh, sort of mid 90s Kate Moss, sort of like burnished tan. I'm gonna go back to my soft brush just so I can develop it really, really gradually. So as you can see, I went to Corfu by the way. <gasps> oh my God, I've been wanting to go to Corfu for so long. My friend has a place there. I had a little gap between people that were renting it out. So we nipped out um, and it. Oh, the, we went to the northeast coast, so beautiful. <gasps> So I feel bathed in nature. Anyway, bang, stop banging on about that, Caroline. Um, the reason I'm saying that is because my tan's natural, my chest, I've kind of psh, psh, spoozed it up in my face because of my SPF, but it's always that area under my neck that I need to just connect in a little bit more so that it looks natural. And I'm just going to bring that up. So you can see now the color, the super light color that I put in or put on my face initially to brighten I mean, really, you can't see it anymore, can you? And I'll take a little small brush like this, the one that I use for the concealer, again, just in my hand, back of my hand, and I'll just whop it just literally above, 
not in my socket because you won't be able to see it, literally quite haphazardly just above because that was quite light, right, around my eyes. So now the lightness is all around here, all around this area and everything else looks quite soft. So I'm not gonna give it that super sheeny. We'll do that next week. This is about a lovely soft, soft matte tan. Great, shall I just do it a little bit more or should we just keep it like this? Because I'm not gonna tan, I'm not going to blush. I'm just gonna keep it quite nice. And do you know what? Isn't it nice with the color of the top and then the pop of blue? Just kind of all comes together. But yeah, I'm not even sure how much this is. It won't be much, um, this e.l.f. product, because e.l.f. is just so affordable, but really, really like this. Maybe I'll get one in my own skin color and then show you, because actually it's not as heavy and as flat as I thought. It still has a slight shape to it. Let me do a nice watermelon lip. Found a great watermelon color. Right, okay, so let's finish that. So went over the bridge of the nose, and that's really it. Um, doesn't have to be complicated. I think I'm gonna go with my with my Stila All Days or Waterproof Brow Color. I will just make sure that I've got no extra oil from the SPF in my brow because when you're using these inks, like I've told you before, you need to make sure it's really kind of dry and flat. So yes, Corfu was lovely. It was myself, my friend, um, and uh, two of my children, not all three, because uh, my middle son, bless his heart, is doing his GCSEs. Oh God. I'm sure many of you have been through that. Um, I literally cannot wait for, I think it's June the 23rd, his last one. And then of course you have that interim period, don't you? I mean, you have to kind of wait for the results. God, forget about it temporarily. I think, um, I think when I was, when I got my results, I drank a bottle of woodpecker and threw up. Classy bird, right? Classy bird. So I've just pressed that on. It's a little bit lighter because my brows are lighter. I did tint them actually before I went away. Not that it made a huge amount of difference, but I don't like them too dark, my brows. Let me just fill that in. It looks good in my light here. I wonder how it reads on camera. Anyway, we'll just pat that down so you can see that I'm not doing lines because for me, I have sort of very sort of soft downy hair. Um, I don't have a complete free space. Um, and when you have completely sort of bare skin, it's very easy for you to paint these like, delicate lines that go across like that. I can on the tail, um, but not when there's a little bit of hair, so it goes a bit. Let me just get a nice little brush. Oh, <laughs> might need to take the lid off that. Um, I just need to brush that through. I might need to balance it with a little bit of coal as well because of my growth pattern of my brows. Sometimes it goes on perfectly and sometimes it needs a bit of help. So this, this brow I'm liking, but this one I'm not. So I'll just get out my trusty Max Factor and pop a little bit of strength. Ooh, I'll turn that off for now. A little bit of strength back into the brow. It's under that bridge there and just pulling that tail out a bit. And then the center bits, do you find that with your brows that sometimes you're like, yes, great. And then the pattern, the hair pattern changes. Then you look a bit more boldy and out of place. I've still got to find the perfect brow person. I think my sister's gonna to go to someone locally, um, which she really rates. I've seen the work, it looks nice. Um, Why just let her be the guinea pig? <coughs> Right, so because we're going to go for this really beautiful, lovely lip by this um, new brand by Selena Gomez, Rare Beauty. Um, it is one of, there's a, a cheek, which I might use next week, which is the best selling product in Space NK in the UK at the moment. But this color is just sensational. Really, really like it. So because this is going on the, um, my lips, I'm going to use something very, a soft wash on my eyes. Now I believe um, that I've used the Hazy Sands palette before from Max Factor. Can you see which is my favorite color? <laughs> oh, 
I'm quite lazy with my makeup, if I'm honest. I always, you know, obviously it's my job and I'm working much, much more now, which is wonderful. Um, but when I'm sort of doing a nice little, maybe I use this for my work look, I think I probably did. Just a bit of framing, just a bit of a wash on the eye so it doesn't look too baggy. And I have um, a little bit of definition around my eye. This kind of like soft putery colour is just so easy. And again, it gives a good balance with the tan and the top. Whereas if I went for the gold and the brown, to me, it would just look not as cool. So it's quite nice to have these sort of soft putery tones and anyone can wear these tones, anyone. Paler skins, the darker skins. I mean, obviously if you're darker, you'd probably mix it with a darker shade. Um, Cause obviously if you're much darker than me, you need to have sort of two or three shades slightly deeper than your own skin tone to kind of create that difference, right? And that's it, just moving the skin around, super, super soft. I mean, it's just easy, easy peasy peasy. Okay, so going on with mascara. Oh, this is Guerlain Black Disturbia. Look at this packaging. Yep, it is so addictive, isn't it? It's just all about being decadent, isn't it? Um, I'm going to place this just on uh, my top lashes. The great thing about this mascara is that it has lots of open channels where the mascara sits and then it has short bristles. So you can see that the mascara goes on like loads of mascara, it goes on really quick. Might just zoom in there to show you. Um, but it doesn't clog. So you get those lovely individual lashes that look lifted and not weighed with mascara, weighed down with mascara. So let's do that on the second eye. I love all your comments, guys. You really are so, so nice. It is a pleasure. I might be on the bus or on the tube and I'm just scroll scrolling through. I try to, some of them might go back a couple of weeks and like them. So I do, I do take note of what you say. Um, I know I've got to go back to some of you on some of the colors, but I'm, Sorry about that. Okay, so because I've done the soft wash and I've got the matte tan, I like the lightness and brightness under that area of my eyes. To me, that just looks fresh and youthful and um, it shapes my face, right? I've got quite defined con um, cheekbones anyway, but that really does help. Um, just a little bit more in the center, just for lift, lift, lift. Perfect, I always tend to get, I don't know what mascara I use. And when I'm filming with you guys, I don't see it until I play it back quickly. Obviously I would never do that on a client, but I can do that for me. It's just that little bit of skin always catches that mascara. That's better, okay. Very nice, feels lightweight. So here we go for Rare Beauty. Um, I've been wearing this colour and I just had like a little t-shirt on over Easter and I put it on and I thought I wonder how I'm going to feel wearing this because I thought it was going to be too dry for me and I always try and road test most of the products that I show you if I haven't really used them for years at work but if they're new just before I come on and say this is great and then I wear it I go oh no actually it's not. So look at this colour. It's such a cool colour. And it works really well with the matte tan. And it works really well if you've got lips like mine where it tends to move into the little fine lines. So I'm able to build up the lip shape. Oh my God, I love this color. Mm. But as you see, when I rub my lips together, it just stays put. And that color feels fresh. It feels new, is that my teeth? That's not my teeth, is it? It feels new, it's got a slip, and that slip definitely lasts. Love it. So there we are, matte tan. I'm really liking the matte tan. If you wanna see the very basic husband makeup, I can definitely do that for you. <laughs> it's not that 
it's not that interesting, but it's just quite nice how sometimes just having that flatness to your tone with a little bit of concealer, a little bit of even a foundation that's not even a bronzer, because sometimes you get those nice caramel colours in it, um, can make all the difference and it just looks quite fresh. Um, my little picture is coming down there, I didn't take that off, so that's the little red thing above there, I do apologise for that. Anyway, enjoy all the blossom, enjoy all the peonies, and um, keep looking up and breathing in. Much love to you all. Bye for now.